Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I'll be talking about an API to assign a security role to a user account. In the previous video, I have demonstrated how to assign a security role to a user account using Backendless Console. However, in some applications, you need to do it programmatically, and there is an API for that. Assigning a role to a user is considered a secure function. You cannot uh, just uh, allow anyone to invoke an API in your system where uh, such system would be uh, compromised easily because someone could just assign an admin privileges to themselves or someone and uh, compromise your system. Therefore, assigning a role to a user has uh, is restricted uh, to only the specific environment in Backendless, which is cloud code. And in cloud code, you can... Uh, basically get the guarantee you get the guarantee from us that it's going to be only your code that will run in there your logic that you deploy into cloud code and as a result it becomes a very secure environment that you have full control of and you can control who invokes that logic under what circumstances it is ex ex executed and it may have all the conditional logic where you decide who gets what role whenever it is assigned or if it needs to be unassigned uh, the cloud code environment supports Codeless, where you can build logic without any uh, programming language. It is visual programming. Or you can deploy your JavaScript in the form of Node.js uh, logic or Java. In this video, I will demonstrate how to do it using Codeless. The API that I will demonstrate in Codeless is going to be exactly the same in both Java and JavaScript for your cloud code deployments. The scenario that I would like to explore in this case is I will continue the theme of our superheroes and villains in this app uh, where we will be registering a superhero and the cloud code will assign the superhero role to that user and we will also be registering a villain and uh, that villain account will get the villain security role. So the security roles that I have, the custom security roles that I have are villain right here and superhero. Uh, the cloud code where the logic is in, it will be invoked directly from the UI builder. So I'm kind of, you know, cutting a lot of corners here. Normally you, you would have something more secure, but still you basically will have an endpoint in the form of API service and that endpoint is really just a method in an API service. API services in Backendless are hosted under in the cloud code section. I already created a service called registration service that has one method, register hero. And this is the logic for that method. We will replicate this method to create another one to register a villain. If you don't know how to create an API service using Codeless, it's very easy. You just click on this plus icon, select Codeless, give it the service name, and then you proceed to declare your first method. Let me review the register hero method first. And uh, in here, uh, this is the register hero. Uh, as you can see, we use the register, register user block and you are already familiar with it. We have reviewed it previously in this course. Uh, the method, there are two methods for the for this API service. One is, uh, th there are two method arguments. One argument is called email and the other argument is password. So I'm passing this email and password directly into the register user block. Register user returns that registered user that I store in the variable. And then I'm using this assign role block. So this assign role block is available only in cloud code. And the arguments for, for this block are identity of the actual user for, for, for which you want to assign a role and the role name. So this takes care of assignment of that role to that user. The assign role block is available under uh, users API section. If you scroll down, you will see there's assign role and remove role. Uh, in UI Builder, you will not see this blocks because this functionality is not available to run from a mobile or a web application. It can run only in cloud code and thus it makes it a lot more secure. So here, this, is, this takes care of everything. And then finally, this method in the API service just returns 
created user back into the calling application. So now let's replicate this method. So I walk you through, but I also want to create it so you can see how I'm putting it all together. Let's create a new method and call that method register villain. There's going to be a parameter email and the type of that parameter is a string. And then another parameter is password and the type of it is also a string. The return type is going to be data object and the data objects is just objects uh, that correspond to a data table in your database. In our case, the data table is users. So we'll be returning a data structure, which is essentially just a user record. So this is the declaration of the register villain method. Click save. It creates the placeholder for our API service method. And then if we click edit, then we can just put this logic together. So first of all, let's create a variable called user and assign to that user variable the result of the re user registration like this and then drag the email argument to the email parameter and then the same for the password. So at this point, the user account is registered and then the next step is to assign role. So assign role, the identity is going to be the email because that's the identity column in uh, our users table and the security role is going to be villain. Finally, let's return the user object that was created by the user registration and that completes the implementation of that method. Once you are done, click the deploy model uh, button. So it deploys that code and that logic into the server and at this point, to both API services are, uh, well, API service with two methods is available. That's all it takes on the server side. So now it is ready to be used. Let's switch to the front end. And in here, I have two pages. One is for the villain registration and the other one is for the superhero registration. The logic behind uh, this form uh, is uh, goes like this. So this is the logic and notice that this block is an invocation of that API service that we just created. Once you deploy an API service, every single method that you have in an API service becomes available as a block in your UI builder functionality. Actually, it is available both in cloud code as well. But here under API services, you'll see the, a section that corresponds to your API service has exactly the same name registration service. And there are two blocks here, one to register villain and the other one is to register hero. We're using register hero. Once that user is registered, then we are uh, sending that user, the actual user who is interacting with the application to the login page. And let's recreate this functionality for the villain registration form. And for this, let me switch to villain app and let's program this form. It's going to be in the on submit event. And in here, let's use our registration service, register villain. And we will need to extract username and password from the form. For this, let's use this get property. That will be user name coming from the actual form. And the same thing for password. Password. And then after that, we will redirect the actual user to the login page. This is it. So let's see uh, how well that works. First, let's register our superhero. So let's say we will be registering Superman at dccomics.com and some password. Click register. That's it. Superhero is now registered. And let's do the same thing with a villain registration. Let's run this page. And for the villain, we will register Joker, dccomics.com. And the password, click register. That's it. The villain is now registered. So at this point, we should have two additional records in the users table and here they are here is our superman and our joker so if we select superman and go into the user roles you'll see that 
our user, which is Superman, has the superhero role assigned. And the same thing will be with the Joker. Use roles, now the Joker is a villain. So, and at this point, once these users log in into, into the application, any security permissions associated with those roles will be enforced by back handler. So if, if a villain cannot get access to some data and tries to retrieve data from, from those tables, back handlers will say, no, you cannot have access to that. Or you can restrict which columns they can see. So there is, there is a lot in there that comes to security that is not covered in this course. Here, I just wanted to demonstrate how the role assignment works. And I hope I did that. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, happy back coding.